and they've just removed it from the game and given it its own skills, and I have to build around that. The fucking fucks. Uh, that's what I have to say about that. Okay, so technically all we need is these two boards, and we can make this work. How do I import the image on this? How's that rogue coming along, uh, Sky? Is that how you want to score? So you right-click on the image, and you say copy link, and then in the field where you can paste the link, you paste it. Yeah, boom. Okay. I think I'll use this time to use different weapons because I use the exact same thing all the time and I'm very happy, but... Close like the game! Terrible. Close it now! Okay, is the game ready? Are we on the road? We're streaming. We're on Twitch. The board is up. I'm waiting on you. The hell you are? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> okay, so uh, you guys decide to leave the city of Nibine out the east gate. And you know... The road is long and difficult to get to Uruk. Probably 160 miles to Uruk. Quite a trip through the deep desert. There's only a couple of forts and villages in between here and there. So, your first day of travel, you will be moving east from the, uh, the jungles, the crescent forest jungle surrounding Nibine. All right, so as you travel east through the jungle, do you guys want to do anything? Do you want to forage while you're in this like uh, area where there's a lot of a lot of trees and and greenery? Yes, please. Okay. Are we anywhere near the border to Golg? Like no, we're up the side. Like... We're going. Hang on, we're here. You guys are right Let's here. Start. Traveling yeah, we're not like really going this. Golg. Yeah, we're not. We're not nowhere anywhere near the forest, are we? So the forest is surrounding the city of Nibine. Ah, oh, we're just on the border. I see. Okay. As we're leaving, I make a comment to the rest of my party. Uh, the rest of my... Uh, yeah, the rest of my party. <laughs> it's such a shame to be leaving Nibine. Truly, it is a home worthy of the name. Okay, so... I hope we can come back soon. Anyway, where are we going? Vrensa, you're going to make a survival check to forage, right? Yeah. Okay. We're heading towards Hurik. Where we have people waiting for us. Hmm. Well, the Nimine King did tell me to look, uh, keep an eye, uh, to uh, look after you guys, so... Okay. <sighs> when you go to forage in the jungle here, um, Dagger Maul will begin barking furiously at the surrounding trees. Dagamo's back. His passive perception can detect that these are not your typical trees, but these are those grabby vine trees with the poisonous barbs that want to suck you in and use you for fertilizer. So, you can fight them in order to actually continue with your, uh, your, your like, food gathering here, or you can ignore it and leave. Well... I don't think anybody really wants to fight these stupid grabby trees again, so we'll go. Okay. Okay, you avoid the deadly blossom killer, and you continue traveling east without foraging. Uh, you travel... Everyone has their resources, their uh, rations and everything. Yep. Yep. You got food, you got yeah. drink. Food. Who's got all the water? Again. There's two barrels Part in the cart. Three, right? Yeah. I'm gonna get some windy desert ambience going. Man, this ambience is really quiet. Let me turn it up a bit. Okay. 
So you travel. You travel through the dunes uh, in between the Windbreak Mountains and the Black Spine Mountains. So you can see a mountain range to either side as you travel eastward. And then the road begins to curve to the north. And it's sort of uh, making a line through the dunes of the desert itself, uh, giving a wide berth to the mountains on either side. Um, as you're traveling in between the mountains several hours later, uh, Dagger Maw again begins to bark, detecting something in the nearby mountains, both to the west and to the east. Although it doesn't seem aggressive, you have the option of investigating in either direction if you wish. I make a comment to the party. Why is the why is the dog being so loud? <laughs> she senses something. Passive There's perception something twenty. <laughs> yeah. It could detect something from that distance. I don't see anything. You see nothing. I'm gonna use Brenza's gonna use her uh, as we're moving obviously every hour so she's going to use her um, radar ability as we like to shorthand call it. Yeah, it's probably the little awareness. You keeping an uh, eye out for humanoids? Is that what you're talking about? And aberration. And aberrations, okay. I this, want to point out that this is neither of those member, things. There's another member in this game session. Uh, not yet. No, no, no. Don't worry about me. No, not you. There's oh. another person joining. Yeah, Caster Blaster showed up. I think the uh, is is he in the chat here? Caster? No, he's not in the chat. Cat, he is. Caster. Oh yeah, he is. The general consensus was no, you can't rejoin. Your character is in a different city on the other side of the map. Oh, I was talking about making a new character. You want to make a new character? Um, yeah. how do you guys feel about that? I think that's a no. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, that's fine. I'll that take. Mm. Okay, so traveling this way, did you want to investigate to the west or to the east? Uh, is there any, like, distinction between the two? I mean, we could... Dagger Maw hears something and is barking. We, you can't ignore it. No, we're I mean, ignore it and keep going on the road. I mean, west yeah. is back towards Nibane. East is off road. So technically, you're like here in the desert. You could investigate either of these two dots that I'm putting on the on the map there. Hmm. Dagger Maw can hear something to the east and to the west, or you can just stay on the road and keep going. And it's not a humanoid, and it's not an aberration. What do we think, mm. guys? I vote that we wreck. I east. vote that we investigate the east. East, yes, that seems quite interesting. That way, we've already seen the west. Okay. You travel uh -huh. off road a little ways. And you go up one big sandy dune, and down the other side, and then everybody else, as you approach, starts to hear it as well. Uh. Daggermaw will bark, and something moves in the sand. There's a beetle. The beetle shakes the sand off of its uh, off of its wings, and it's going to take a short little flight uh, across the dune, move about 30 feet, and then scuttle into the sand and bury itself again. You can see several other little mounds and uh, several other beetles. There are a large number of giant fire beetles here. But they're very skittish, and as you approach, many of them will fly away or try to uh, avoid the party. So you can uh, attempt to shoot them, like uh, if you've got ranged weapons, or you can attempt to chase them, but that's going to be quite hard, because they move pretty quick here. Is there any particular reason that we would want to chase them or shoot them? They've got bellies full of yummy alchemical supplies, if I recall correctly, from my nature class. Does rent a recall that from her nature class by now. Yeah, you can roll for it. <laughs> Probably there was some kind of nature-like check that we could make. Mm. Damn it, DD. The, the ranger won't... has plus zero to nature. <laughs> she rolls a 19, though. You can try to take a few down from a distance. 
Okay. Uh, you are aware that uh, they can be harvested. They do have a valuable ingredient. It's uh, basically a light source that lasts for about six days. A lot of people like to use them. How strong of light source? As good as a torch. Wow. An alchemical light source as good as a torch that produces no smoke. Oh, that's nice. How do you... I mean, trade supplies. You carve it out their belly. They're basically big lightning bugs. Miners and adventurers prize these creatures for a giant fire beetle's glands that continue to shed light for 1d6 days after the beetle dies. Problem is, is are we actually going to be anywhere in a town to sell these in 1d6 days? Well, we're, we're heading towards the fort very close. They only have about four hit points, so if you can hit them with a ranged attack, you can kill one and harvest it. I don't really have any ranged attacks other than a certain special ability that need not be named. Yeah, I figured it would mostly be Varenza here if he wants to take a shot. What distance are they? Uh, like I said, they are skittish and they will flee from the party. So anytime you approach them, they begin flying away at about the same speed that you guys move. You said that we could shoot them. But wouldn't it be in our best interest to try and keep them alive as, lo alive as long as possible? You want to capture them? Yeah, that's fine. Mm. Yeah, then we can mm. kill them later. Do what you, you want. Try to catch a chicken. <laughs> I, I don't have a net. Do you? Mm, we could, well, they're beetles. We could try capturing them in our hands. No, no, these that's are definitely. giant firefly beetles. They're like a small size creature. They are small size. They weigh about 40 pounds each. Jesus. I can shoot a fire uh, bolt on them. Let's see. How big are they? Like the size of my ha uh, the size dog. of a hand? It's like a small dog. A yeah. dog? Fucking hell. No. No then. <laughs> that won't that wouldn't fit in a bag. Sure it would. Well bag of holding maybe. <laughs> I've seen women put small dogs in bags all the time. Well you know you know you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah but it's not the size of a chihuahua. You don't take the entire beetle, you just take the parts you need on it. It's a fat chihuahua. <laughs> It's more bulbous. <laughs> Is it the size uh, of a dash hound? Nah, not that big. What the f oh wait, Daxon? <laughs> yeah, it's about that size. Yeah, 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 da yeah. Dash hound, Daxon, yeah. Well, I'll take a shot at a few uh, if I have a chance. Well, forty pounds mean like a greyhound, wouldn't it? Hmm. They're can just not athletic? very big. Um, no, can I make an athletic check to grab them? It's like the size of two fat cats, pretty much. How fast do you move? <laughs> do you move Me? faster than 60? No. Yeah, but can, uh, can we reach at least 120 feet in front of them? Or? If you can move faster than 60 feet in a turn, you might be able to catch up to one with a melee attack. Otherwise, only ranged attacks will get them. Oh, if only we had a really speedy mount. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I'll, well, um, let's, uh, let's when you start to move ninety feet around, there you go. Well, actually, yeah. You say that we need to be. Do we need to be faster than sixty feet? Like, have a speed of sixty? Or Correct. Speed of like you probably need at least ninety to catch up to one, because they start flying away from you when you get close, and they move sixty. My point is, couldn't we dash? Uh well, if your moving speed is 30, then you're only moving as fast as they are, and they will stay ahead of you. Ugh. Right. But Brenza can dash as a bonus action, dash as a regular action, and then move. And we do have a few ranged attacks, too. So Brenza could catch up to them. One every other round, in, a, in theory, right? It's your call. Do what you want. Yeah, I'm going to try to catch a couple of these. I've got some rope. And I've got a whip. Mm. I'm going to try to do non-lethal damage using my whip. Mm. So I guess I'll spend one round catching up to one. And then I'll try to whip it as it tries to fly away. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's my mod? Is it plus seven? I really don't think you can do non-lethal damage with a whip. <laughs> So it's probably going to kill it. <laughs> no, grit and glory. Grit and glory rules. It's actually de de designed to do non-lethal damage. Mm. 
Well, if something has the non-lethal property, yeah. Yep. Did you roll yet? No, not yet. I was see making sure it had the right property before I actually, you know, try to knock it out and tie it up. I rolled a two, so only a nine. Okay. So you whip at the beetle, but it flies away. Uh. I shoot uh, I shoot a beetle with a fireball. Okay. Roll the hit. The beetle flies into the air to try to avoid your attack. All right. <laughs> it explodes. You destroyed the beetle. Yeah, with 21. <laughs> 21 damage is four times... No. Five times its hit points. You oh, might have... Leave it? I don't think you even you left a trace it of it. I think your firebolt spattered <laughs> it across the dunes so that there's nothing retrievable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when but your attacks you do too much dunes. damage. You ever watch a cartoon where you use a flamethrower and it just turns into ash in the outline of the ca of the cartoon character? I think that's what you did to that poor beetle. Yep. Is this, uh, is this Starship Trooper? <laughs> All right. Gerson, we're going to try again. Okay. You chase down a beetle, you whip it. Whip it good. Da, 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 da. Hey. Crack that whip. Okay. The towel. Did you do four damage to knock I'm it out? Not... Uh, yeah, because uh, my mod is plus four. Okay. So attempting to do non-lethal damage, you whip it in such a way where you've only stunned it. It falls over unconscious. All right. Renza's going to use some of her rope to tie it, uh, like kind of leash-like leash around its body. And tie the other end to Dagger Maw. Okay. While you're getting that, that beetle, crap? other beetles continue to move away and or hide themselves. So. Uh, yeah, they have a yeah. chance to shoot another one. Sure. Uh, twenty-five to hit. Okay. Uh, fourteen damage. Fourteen damage. That is four times its hit points. Three times. Okay. Another beetle explodes. Jeez. Any of the glands left? Like, anything retrievable? Well, doing fire damage doesn't leave much to, to collect. Well, uh, then, then I guess I have a snack. Then I'll just eat the cooked meat. <laughs> sure. There you go. There's a little little scraps of meat scattered across the, the desert. A little bit sandy, but you can brush it off. Just... Yeah, I think I probably... Does it taste like lobster? Five-second rule, it's still good. Yeah, it probably would taste <laughs> like lobster. I've eaten something probably much worse. Bugs, the, the other clear meat. Clear meat. Whatever we were fed when we were uh, slaved in, in the arena was uh, probably much worse than this. Okay. Well, I think that's about enough beetle action. So, uh, do you guys want to head back to the road? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this time we go uh, west, because I want to go and find some ticks. I'm kidding. Please, God, no. Hmm. Okay. The road passes through miles of heat-blasted desert. Uh, let's see. You guys have plenty of water, so you'll all be required to drink two gallons during the course of the day. About every hour you need to take a sip, and then over the course of the day you consume two gallons of water. So uh, mark off ten of your gallons uh, when the first day is drawing to a close there. Uh, Who's keeping track of the water? I don't know. Long, were you on that? Long is muted. Oh, yeah, he's eating food. He he left and he never came back, so I guess he's just still eating food. Um, yeah, I'll remind him when he comes back. I think he was on that. How many gallons we had? Sixty. You just used ten. Fifty gallons. Well, just should like, for now. Yeah, should we just use a counter? Yeah. yeah. yeah why am I even writing this on? There we go. Here's the counter. It's wobbling through the friggin thing okay so we currently had we have, we have 50 out of 60 total. right okay. yeah. by the end of the day you've reached this point which is about halfway to fort isis 
Uh, roughly halfway between Nibane and Fort Isis, there's a little landmark. Okay, so up ahead, Dagomal will be the first to detect the sounds of grazing animals and uh, the faint voices of people talking to each other. Uh, you continue on the road, and as you get closer, you can make out more details. There's actually a small field of scrub grass offside from the road. And there are a number of tents set up, and you see there's a small community of herders who have set up camp and are grazing their animals here. Uh, there's a couple dozen, uh, mostly men, a few women, and there are several small herd animals, domestic beasts that are grazing. Uh, since there's... Did I detect them or are they not humanoid? Yeah, they're humanoids. Oh, yeah, you were expecting elves as well, weren't you? Elves are humanoid. Yeah, you probably would have detected them a long way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just making sure they weren't like mimics or something. So if I see a humanoid and I don't detect a humanoid, there's a problem. Hmm. So, um, bunch of people. Farmers, did you say? Herders. They are herders. herders. With a bunch of grazing animals and tents. What kind of grazing animals? Uh, probably kanks. All right, fair enough. Probably some kanks, some crodlu. It's a mix of the domestic animals, basically. Wow. Well, Anybody want to talk to these guys or just yeah, wait and keep them. walking? You can't keep walking. You are exhausted. If you travel any further, you oh, will die. Oh, oh. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Right. We're, stopping for we're at five oh. levels of exhaustion already. Shit. <laughs> uh, and, our, yeah. um, and our kanks could probably take a rest and eat some of the grass. Yeah. Right? Don't worry, Long. You're already yeah. dead. Let's, uh, well, let's I guess I'm turning into slime. Bye. <laughs> let's see if, we're, if they're friendly enough to let us join their camp for the evening. Bring some numbers and all that. Before the party oh, has any chance... Friendly. Before the party has any chance to determine if these people are good or bad, I am going to put my hand up in the air and say, uh, Greetings, fellow Nibbanaeans! Mm. The... I trust you are from Nibbanae, I hope. They wave to you and invite you f to uh, approach. Oh, yeah, we'll do, do, do they look well clothed? Are they peasants or are they naked? Are they are they wealthy people? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're probably not very rich. Okay. They're probably in moderate. They're herders. So there's a bunch herders? of different people in different stages of dress. Are you going to look for a leader of sorts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, yeah. If they have any. Uh... We'll look for the naked man. All right. You find the man wearing the least amount of clothing. <laughs> He's wearing nothing but sandals and a skirt. Otherwise, he is completely naked. Uh, he approaches, and he introduces himself as Harjaz Tarek. He's about 40 years old with a round face, tan skin. He's got straight black hair that's graying at the temples. It's cut rather short. Uh, he's going to welcome you and say, Ho, travelers! Do you come from Nibane? Well, most of us are from here. And we're heading towards Herrick, but we do have a new fellow here that is actually from Nibane. Uh, hello there! I am from Nibane! I'm sure you know me, Keldor, Sergeant. He shakes his head. I have not heard of you. Hmm. Oof, I laughed but, uh, under her breath. Uh, with a bit of a twitch in his eyebrow, Keldor will go, Are you sure I am quite well known among the townspeople? Hmm, why is that? Well, I'm the famous Keldo. I've been in ma I've been in many a battle, and I've mm. always come home with glory. There have been parades. <laughs> Are you some sort of uh, member of the military of Nibane? Indeed. Mm, I see. I see. Insight check. <laughs> Do you or your companions have need of water? We can sell you gallons of water for three ceramic pieces each. Is that a good deal? How much is a regular gold? How much is a regular 
It's a fair price for water on the open road. You don't really need it. You have plenty of water. Normally, a gallon is like two bits at somewhere like at a water hole or a city. So it's a markup of like 60. Yeah. No, 15. It's it's a high, high, high markup. Oh, I, I believe we're okay. We have rations and... Yeah. Well... We just left uh, earlier in the day for, uh, from an M&A. We are but simple herdsmen, so we have little to offer except for water to the uh, travelers that pass on the road. Uh, we thank you for your offer, but I think most of my party is in agreement that we are not in urgent need of water at this moment. Mm. Mm, do you know of any spare lodging or or just anywhere we could camp down that is uh, would be welcome to have some campers around? He spreads his arms, indicating the ground before you. You are welcome to rest here for the night. Any creatures around to be uh, concerned about? Mm. There issues around here lately? There is rumors of giants to the north. Oh, yeah. I would use caution if you are traveling this way. They are said to roam along the cliffside of the... Uh, of the... Uh, yeah, what's it called? The so Dragon's Bowl. I get bowl. So, he's oh. indicating there. Oh, that far north. Okay. Well, all the way far north. Oh. Is that the direction we're heading Boy. towards? Or are we going to go uh, west when we uh, reach uh, Cheslam? Cheslam, or are we going to Ram? So, he indicates that the giants were around the Dragon's Bowl area, so they could be anywhere around the Dragon's Bowl. Anywhere. I mean, it be safer for us this entire thing is the Dragon's Bowl. The Dragon's Bowl is, um, he'll uh, describe it. The Dragon's Bowl is a great cliff walled crater more than 70 miles wide. Legend claims that the basin was formed when the first dragon tore its body free from the living rock. But this is probably just a myth. The cliff is a thousand feet deep, certain death for any who fell into it. There's rumors that at the bottom is a uh, small forest surrounding a lake of the freshest water you've ever seen. But beware, if you can even get down the cliffside, there is said to be a powerful druid named Enola guarding those protected waters. Oh, yeah? That sounds uh, intriguing. Mm. And giants. I think we've... Haven't we, haven't we uh, killed a few before in our life? Uh, like two, maybe. Oh, you've uh, slain giants. Around, uh, you truly yeah, are impressive adventurers. Oh, yeah, uh, Keldo, will, Keldo will look back and go, No way! You guys have killed dra- giants? What do you believe, yeah, was, yeah. Nibine, what do you believe that Nibine sent either. us on an important mission to gold? This is, a, this is, this is outstanding. I knew I'd heard of legendary feats, but killing giants. <laughs> it's not that uncommon. There are mercenaries along the road that fight giants all the time. I mean, okay, giants? Oh, big deal. So what? <laughs> they they are dangerous. It's it is kind of a big deal, but it's it's not the biggest of deals. It's not an uncommon deal. Killing giants grow the fuck up. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Okay. Um, Well, if you have no other questions and you don't wish to purchase any water, I'll be uh, rejoining my group. Have a a safe night's rest. Any food? And does your group might need uh, some protection for the evening? No, no, we're fine. Okay. Keldo claps his hands together and goes, Well, gentlemen, looks like we're staying here for tonight. I hope you brought your own tent. And uh, he pulls out a tent from uh, attached to his backpack and starts setting it up. All right. The sun sets, and it begins to get very cold. I'll, uh, set a f- I'll uh, start a fire. I set up group tent. So it uh, drops from 150 degrees around noon all the way down to 70 now. 
What about in, in Celsius? What is that? I don't 70 know. 70 is kind of pleasant. 70 is still comfortable. 70 is like where it starts to get really cold in Fahrenheit. 70? Wow. That's what it is in my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> 70 in Canada, we're still in shorts. 30 is freezing. 70 is like getting colder. You're Canadian, so 70 would probably feel like summer weather for you. You wear shirts and a t shirt. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we get t shirts. Go below at my house. I don't know. When it hits 50 here, I have to wear like lots of extra layers. When it hits 50, I'm outside in shorts. Yeah, I think it's like minus 20 tonight. But California the temperature water. differential is a big deal. Yes. The change from such hotness to such coldness is, oh, yeah. plays havoc on the body. Right. Well, we'll set a fire for the, for the evening. Mm. Right. Do you have firewood? Did Sky finish building a character? Mm, uh, kind of, yeah. yeah. You have no firewood. You're unable to start a fire. Has Sky already introduced his character or not yet? Well, I, I don't think I'll be introducing until it's a, a convenient spot in the story to do so. If you uh, do start a fire in the scrub grass, the herders will quickly stamp it out and ask you not to start any fires here. <laughs> I'll need to talk it over with Ninja in terms of like what makes sense in the story to go ahead and bring me in. It'll be on the side, you know, I'm down low. Probably in the nod today, I'm guessing. Yeah, all right then. There's a couple spots you could pop in. Like, they're going to get to Fort Isis tomorrow. They're going to get to Shazlam the next day after that. Assuming they don't go to Ram instead. You're going to be camping out if you head towards Ram, though. All right, Varenza sits up a two-man tent with Dagger Maw, pulls out the blankets, and they huddle for warmth. So you are secure against the cold. Has everybody else got some method to stay warm? Um, I got a tent. I've got both a tent and a blanket. All right. So you're good. You're good. See ya. Are you still there? The blanket is made of brown Sia's sand gone. howler. And howler. Yeah, See is not in this game. Made of something called sand howler. Who knows? I'm going to see ya. Dead. I killed it. Hmm. His bardic inspiration will be missed. Maybe he's uh, reinstalling Windows as I suggested. <laughs> Please, God, don't let him hear that. All right. Let's take a quick break. A quick break. I need to go uh, refresh my coffee cup. I'll be back in a minute. So, <laughs> Sorry, Will, are you going to go anywhere or can we talk? You said me? Yes. I said, go anywhere? I said, do you want to do something while we're in this break, or you know, are you all right to talk? Uh, I I'm all right to talk. I I I'll, I'll be here. Awesome, Paulson. What kind of rogue are you making? Well, um, what I was thinking was a uh, sort of um, a soldier who couldn't handle the demands of listening to an overbearing uh, a, a commanding officer that was that was unkind to the populace, uh, rude, tyrannical, and he ended up doing something that got him ejected. Um, a friend of his uh, vouched for him and kept him from seeing death in, in court, but uh, and he's done a lot to, to keep his, his friends alive, but it's at this juncture be best for his friends and family if he left town for a good long while for all that to cool down. So uh, he's done some things uh, against that officer, so the military at large then, but you know, so he's kind of a wanted man uh, by probably the Nibine, uh military potentially, or maybe a different one. I don't know. Oh, that's what I'm going really? Forward. That's kind of the as I've been rolling here with this archetypes and um, come on brain uh, personality trait ideal bond flaw you know inspiration that's kind of what I'm looking at here um, 
So, um, put on the X Soldier and uh, um, so so that's also my current hook as to get him away from family and friends and into a life of adventuring abroad. And so in, in kind of seeing a group come along, I might be like, hey, you're heading out of town? So am I. Or maybe I I have also been thinking about this idea. I'll bring it up with, with um, uh, Ninja, Ninja. In, a, in a slightly more dramatic fashion would be to I'm kind of in the middle of a heist of uh, getting dirt on my commanding officer and bringing that to light, you know, kind of strewing papers or panties or something like that across the city square and uh, and then needing to evacuate the town uh-huh. right now. Okay. So um, kind of just spitballing some ideas, brainstorming a bit, and then um, I'd also actually... Um, it would be great if he, if my character knew somebody else in the group so that that way there was a, a bit more cementing paste to, you know, kind of keep, hold the group together. Is anybody else thinking about a, a military background or something like that that would, might, might know my character? Mad God has a military background. Yeah, if you really want to get into it, I'm a, I've got a military background. The difference is, I'm a military background, and I'm still in the military. So if I find your character, next time we're in Nibonet, I'm just taking you in. I'm back. Well, that could, Wait, you, you could, could think about it that way. convince him to not you, you, you could think <laughs> while we're outside way. of Nibonet. <laughs> you, you could think about it that way, but I'm sure in your job, in your line of work, you found people who... Uh, really don't don't belong there. Don't deserve to be there. Who are are, are you know they're collecting a paycheck. They, they don't do great work. They they cause more harm than good being where they are. And so you can probably imagine that uh, someone like that might be in the military as well, and that uh, you might be amenable to my cause. Like yeah, you, what you did was against the law. What you did was against the military. But man, you, you can understand why I did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, you're you you going back your to way too. <laughs> You can go your, your way too, but I'm just trying to offer you a different perspective. He he well, killed he killed uh, four peasants for trying to worship uh, the wind god. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't told the party what my character is like yet. I'm leaving them decide what it is, uh, what it is, what my character is like, and what his alignment is, his flaws, etc. But okay. uh, yeah, if you want to make that backstory and trust me to definitely not turn you into Nibane Police the second I get the chance, absolutely, you go for well, it. I mean, why not? Hey, listen, I, I wouldn't know that, and and I mean, I will keep character knowledge and player knowledge separate but um, the type of character that, that this guy is based on personality trait role he would tell you up front he, he would not even lie he would just tell you right to your face this is what I did yep that was me I did it <laughs> not a deception yeah. uh, rogue for sure absolutely if, not if you want to like if you want to, are you dead set on it being Nib- in Nibane being not at all place that you're? No, right. it's a different military. Uh, it's just that if you're part of Nibane, I'm gonna wanna, I will want to turn you in. So there's your warning. Um, uh, if you end up like, do if you do want to choose Nibane though, I will tell you more information about my character, because okay. you will have been around in Nibane to know. Kind of who my character well, is. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you my thoughts on this topic. Uh, it sounds like you and I are the three people who need to talk the most. First of all, because if there's any chance of having any kind of character background to, to cement the party, you would probably be it. So maybe there could be a bit of tension there as to like me trying to convince you not to turn me in. Yeah, I'm. But, th- I'm thinking the same thing. I'm thinking like. 
my character sees you, first thing he does is tie you up. Then we get into combat, and there's like the giant thing of fucking untie him so that he can fight. No, he's going to go to Nevernet. Okay. But and we're I'm, leaving I, I, Nevernet. I, I'd be down for for a little bit of PvP. Then he can stay tied that. up until we get there. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely amenable to some kind of PvP and kind of going along with the story a bit like that. Um, I won't get my panties in a bunch, you know. But um, uh, let's see here. Um, or maybe you're already friends from the military, and that's why you're not turning him him him, him in. Well, <laughs> that would be my my character's go to, is that you know oh we he was under a different commanding officer. Uh, maybe he heard stories about this guy. Uh, I could start, you know, throwing in names and stuff, making up names and writing up a backstory here. How but, is um, you need to establish what your character did if he is going to be a wanted man? Like, did he kill a guard? Did he kill no, his general? No, no. Just like, punched him in the face and now he yeah, has to run. run. <laughs> uh, insubordination, you know, disrespect to a commanding officer. M maybe, maybe slapped him. You know, uh, definitely surrendered my badge or my my you know. Uh, Drew a weapon. Dishonorably, dishonorably discharged. That's for sure. Hmm. My character would probably still want to take you to Nibane to face like court justice, which may not even be death. But yeah, I'd be a bit more lax in like. This guy killed someone. He needs to fucking. This guy killed someone. He needs yeah. to go and get tried in court. And, well, you know, instead, I, I, I would say it's kind of more like uh, uh, this guy slapped his superior and ran of, away. Some of those, some of those, uh, those stories where the stormtroopers turned in Star Wars, you know, where, where they they defected, um, kind of like that kind of a thing where like we didn't sign up for this stuff, we didn't sign up for this shit, you know. Um, this guy wants me to go ahead and and shake down peasants for their their taxes, or he wants me to. I don't. We can take, come up with different ideas. You know, maybe it's oh, uh, a family trying to seek amnesty into Nibane, and and the the guy says no, and we're like, well, they're gonna die out there. Something or someone, we're, we're, the town's under attack, or or there's a, I don't know. I'm just spitballing, hmm. brainstorming. But but those are the ideas percolating through my mind right now, and I'm just kind of letting you see what I'm thinking matter yeah, yeah. okay so can't... everyone back oh, everyone ready oh, how long have you been here? oh wow <laughs> oh. it only took me three minutes to get my teacup and come back Motherfucker. good stuff was happening though if you had the stream up you'd know this <laughs> well i'm sorry ninja but, but i haven't got my dual monitor mm. unfortunate it I it's couldn't. In my other house. I oh, could not stream. live without a, a dual monitor set up. It's too hard. So now, I should be going on Twitch, you're saying? If you want to watch what we're doing, you can check us out on Twitch. All right, let me see here. I've, I've been on Twitch before one time. There's the link there. Oh, there we go. We'll look for that. Oh, but you're on the table, too, no? Where'd you put it? Oh, okay. oh, oh, I see. Okay. It's in Dark Sun. <laughs> Alright, so. I assume that you guys bed down and rest for the night. So everybody recovers all of their... If you had missing hit points, I doubt you did. If you were tired, whatever. You're no longer tired. You wake up in the morning. You're still in this small community I of herders. Shove a pillow in what's his Kerwitz's well, face. Kermit. Fuck you. Keldo. <laughs> Keldo. <laughs> I didn't even say Kermit, but alright then. <laughs> Wake up the next morning. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> oh, Miss Piggy. Today we're gonna, today we're gonna do some, play some, uh, do some singies for the kitties. Yeah, hey. hey. <laughs> What's green and smells like pork? Uh, Kermit's the frog's dick. 
I was gonna say fingers, but all right. Uh, <laughs> either way. <laughs> Heard that one before. Yeah, I forgot mm -hmm. about that. Why are there so many perverted puppets? Because if it exists, there's porn of it. Right. So we wake up next morning. All right. Like I said, there's the same group of uh, herders here. Pretty uninteresting folks. They don't have a whole lot to say. You guys going to set out on your next day of journey? Mm -hmm. All right. Goodbye, yep. tiny farmland. So I guess you Assemble my tent. pack up all your tents and stuff, pile up into your uh, into your carts, and whip your kanks into a into a trot, and head off to the north. You travel for many hours still through the desert dunes, but eventually, around midday, when the sun is at its peak and the heat is at its worst, you begin to enter into a rocky badland. Exiting out from the dunes, you travel for many more hours throughout the day, and when you're about three-quarters of the way through the day, uh, Vrenza will start to detect humans ahead. A very large number of humans. Someone's beginning to set. Them, I, I believe the, uh, I believe Fort Isis is just around. Just ahead of us. Okay. We're getting close, guys. You travel for several more hours, and you are required to drink two gallons of water each, so deduct another ten gallons. Okay. I think you're down to 40 now. And you're going to arrive at Fort Isis. Is Fort I Isis, like, is it Nibinaean territory? Like, I'm not sure where the territories kind of end and begin. Uh, roll a history check. Uh, okay. I'll tell you if your character would know. Mm, what the fuck's history? Nope, I did not pick proficiency in any of that, so it's just a standard roll. Ooh, ooh, yes, yes! 17. 17 is good enough. You recall that Fort Isis is run by, uh, the Merchant House McKay. Okay. Uh, what is? Do I have any recollection of the relationship between uh, Guildhouse McKay and Nibine? Like, is it good? Is it a hostile friendship? What kind of? What's it like? Uh, House McKay is uh, very respectful to the other major uh, merchant houses, but very disrespectful to lesser houses. That's a well-known thing about the McKay. Merchant house, they uh, will sometimes do raids on on lesser merchant houses. Oh, so okay. get a little shady. As we approach uh, Fort Isis, then I'll say to my companions, uh, "Be careful up here, guys. This place is run by Fort. This uh, this place is run by Guild McKay. And if there's one thing I know, they're rookie crushers." They admire the they admire the rich, and they do not like the poor. It's more of a respect thing. They respect the power of the strong merchant houses. They wouldn't want to get crushed by the stronger houses, but weaker houses, they'll exploit them as much as they can. Well, we're not rookie merchants, so Rens is going to see a problem. Rens Rens would like to see if anyone. Interest buying a new pet beetle. <laughs> you want to sell a beetle, huh? Uh, yep. Yeah, there's moderate interest. You probably get. Uh, mm, somebody Just, offers uh, you four ceramic pieces for your beetle. Four ceramic? Um, out of character. How much are these worth? Hmm. I don't know. I was just rolling a dice for it. <laughs> oh, fair enough. All right. Uh, four thousand. Starting, starting a beetle fighting competition. <laughs> I mean, just if they fit in my pocket. I'm thinking about calling them pocket beetles. Mm. We should call them Pokem Pokem pocket monsters. <laughs> mm. 
I, I don't want to be sued. We are on Twitch. <laughs> Uh, the other piece of information is, you know, you know, House McKay is from Rom. Up north. So they're actually more more in league with the Romans than with the Nimbinaeans. The Romans. The Romulans. Jinx. The ramen noodles. And what about Tyr? Yeah, it's in the. Uh, the trade route, all, all the okay. merchant caravans try to hit up any of the cities. There's usually representatives of each of the major merchant houses in each of the cities. So if you go to Tier and you go to that one district, you'll find each and every major merchant house has its own building. And it's uh, similar in a lot of the, a lot of the cities. Are we, uh, are we at the entrance of the city now, of, of the port? You can be. So you enter Fort Isis, eh? Might be a I safe place so, to yeah. Okay. You approach Fort Isis. Uh, Fort Isis is not huge. There's uh, long. You're breathing into your microphone a lot. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't sound quite as creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're inside a trading fort. Uh, you're met by the gate guards. Uh, there's a large number of guards here, and you can see many porters moving packages and boxes and barrels. Uh, a large amount of trade goods being moved around. Here, there, there will be a merchant caravan. It's probably a McKay merchant caravan that's uh, sort of resting up here uh, before heading out with some, some cargo. Uh, you can see that there's a rather old man, and he seems to be overseeing the, the work of the laborers and shouting orders here and there. He has the look of a, a leader. Uh, so if you wanted to talk to somebody knowledgeable, he'd probably be the one. Ah, uh, a man of orders. Yeah, we can head towards him. Okay. You approach the leader of Fort Isis. He sees you approach, and he uh, he's going to come see what's up with you. He hasn't seen you before, new arrivals. He likes to know everybody that comes through his fort. Uh, he introduces himself as Delamac. Delamac of McKay. Merchant House McKay. Hello, Delamac. I'm Grimorn from Tyr. My companions are... Oh, sorry. I'm Keldor of Nibane. Right. Marg of Tear at your service. Mm -hmm. Far from home, are we? Yeah. Quiet. We were on quite an adventure. We left here. Did you come through Silver Springs? Oh, no, no. no. We traveled through the forest of Golgan Nibane. Oh, from the south, then. Interesting. Opposite direction, yes. Yeah, we went all the way down to uh, Altharic. Uh, Delamac has a bald head and black eyes, silky brown skin. He has an oblong, unremarkable face. He's about 5'1", with a regular build. Uh, everything he says is a shout. He doesn't know how to talk with an indoor voice at all. He's clearly used to shouting at all of his men all day long, every day, and he doesn't have a, a, a lower notch on his volume. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Why my dad. Why are we yelling? <laughs> He's also a little breathless. He easily runs out of breath. He's kind of an older man. Um. Well, we're heading. We're we're heading uh, uh towards north north uh, west from here, and we were wondering if we might be able to stay for the evening. Are you associated with one of the merchant houses, or are you simply travelers? What's your business? We're travelers. We do know, know some of the merchant houses from Tyr, but and we've done some work for them as well. But uh, where are you headed no, then? On your travels. Um, we're going uh, up northwest. Mm, northwest. Are you going to go to Shazlim? We'll pass by. We were told that there might be a magical lake in the Dragon's Bowl. A bowl. We might stop by and take a look. Oh, I'd steer clear of that area if I were you. There's tale of giants. 
The Dragon's Bowl is a giants. dangerous area. We eat giants for breakfast. Ah, it's been so long since I've had any rumors from uh, the Tier region. What's been the local news? Wasn't there a war with Yurik some time back? Yeah, we defeated them. Personally? Mm, we were... Uh, well, besides uh, Keldor over here, uh, we were part Hello. of the war, yes. Mm, veterans, eh? Interesting. We ourselves, yeah. And we made a giant bonfire afterwards. It was fantastic. <laughs> he arches an eyebrow and says, Hmm. I see. Is there anything noteworthy about you that would indicate you're a fire cleric? Uh, maybe the lantern. Yeah, I don't think that would do the trick. His clothing. Well, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a plate and a. Plate yeah, right I don't think he's got robes his on. Beard that, his beard that is constantly on fire. <laughs> Falk oh, yeah, fire beard. Uh, well, he's going to laugh at that. Rather inappropriate laugh. Um, he says, well, you're welcome to uh, rest here for the night. It seems as if you're uh, tired and dusty from your travels, so you're welcome to uh, stay in, in our guest houses here and clean yourself up. Uh, I would like to talk more with you over dinner, if you'd, uh, if you'd uh, do me the, uh, the courtesy of uh, sharing some more of your tales from afar. I don't get to leave this fort. So I like to ask travelers many questions about where they've been and what they've done. It keeps an old man entertained. Any dangers around here or people you're looking for that we might have passed by? Hmm. Well, I've heard many rumors and I know many things. But uh, you've had a long day on the road. Let's do this over dinner, say in uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Mm, sounds... Keldor feels his stomach and goes, Guys, I could eat. Yeah, and uh, can, is there a place to re replenish water in your fort? Maybe we can buy some. Uh, there's a well, but uh, it'll cost you two ceramic pieces to fill something. All right, we'll do so. Okay. For a gallon? Uh, no, to fill a container. So it could be one of your barrels is two, and the oh. other one's two. Or you I'll could pour your one barrel into the other, oh. and then you only have to pay once. <laughs> I'll pay the two ceramics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That sounds smart. Yeah, Never it know. says Dillamac is kind and generous, so he uh, he gives you a bunch of a bunch of water on the cheap. Um, all right, so he immediately begins shouting orders at his chefs, who are like all the way across the yard, <laughs> as loud as he possibly can. Is there any um, symbols in the city or anything that might indicate that the uh... They believe in whatever, you know, God or uh, even one of the Sorcerer Kings in particular. Mm. Roll a perception check. I got a passive 18. Is that going to be enough or you want me to... Roll a perception check. You didn't notice anything with an 18. Oh, I, I roll a two. Roll high. Yeah, forget about it. Nope. It doesn't work. Exactly. I don't notice That's anything. Not yeah, you don't see anybody holding a symbol of their god anywhere nearby. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like I said, there's guest houses and there's baths if you want to clean yourselves up from your uh, your road dust and your road weariness. You've got about half an hour before dinner's cooked. Are you going to take advantage of the, the baths? Is there a barn? Is there a barn fire somewhere? Um, if you go into the main building, there's a large cook fire that the cooks are working over. Oh, there's people around there. Yep. Are you trying to bathe in the fire? Brenta's gonna. Actually, I Brenta's gonna go to the. Brenta's gonna go and make use of the bathhouse. It's about the only use she has for towns and cities. Yeah. It's hard to Probably take a bath in the desert. Okay. So you clean yourself up, and some time passes. The cooks finish cooking their meal. Uh, Dillamac is going to sit down at the end of the long common room table. Uh, 
Let's see here. What are they gonna serve? Beans on toast. Okay, so right. it's a five course right, meal. Uh, the first course is uh, beans. There's a course of beans. And what kind of beans? What are they cooked in? Uh, they're just like red red beans. And rice? Red beans and rice? Uh, yeah, that's the second course. From the fruits and veggies, they have rice. So beans and rice, and... Let's see, they have some ramen ale. I'll have a ale. Or uh, hay fron tea, if you prefer. Uh, I prefer rum. Rum is good. Uh, the main course is uh, Gorak Roast. So they bring out the Gorak Roast. It's uh, not the nicest meat, but it's what they have, and it's cooked well. And for dessert, they bring out some delicious red cactus grubs. Mmm, still wriggling. Mmm, delicious. Fresh protein. They have a sweet flavor. Before, except for the ones cooked in our gruel in the slave pits. Yeah, it's served on a cactus. They bring the cactus out and they cut it open, and it's all full of these little grubs that are eating the cactus meat on the inside. And you can just pick them off and munch them, and they burst in your mouth with flavor. Mm, gushers. I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So while you're eating the meal, uh, you wanted to discuss things. Um, you had asked Delamac about uh, the the local situation. And he'll regale you with tales. He'll tell you about how Rom has seen hard times. The pathetic state of the monarchy in Rom is illustrated by the fact that some Templars have been illegally selling their services to Merchant House McKay. A crime punishable by death if the Grand Vizier of Rom bothered to enforce it. And the people of Rom call for the overthrow of the Vizier. He has a very tentative control over his city. House McKay's nursing its wounds after several skirmishes with lesser houses who seek to steal their trade routes. He'll tell you about House Lomnos, and he says the name with disgust and spits on the ground afterwards. House Lomnos has caravans flying under the banner of House Sham of Nibine, which infuriates the great and noble house. They are caught up in their rivalry with House Inica of Gog and can spare no manpower to deal with the pathetic House Lemnos. House McKay would pay a high bounty to agents who can dispatch these rivals, if you had interest in bounty hunting. The uh, reward would be ten gold to eliminate the caravan master of House Lemnos and his imposter caravan. Where, where are they found? Where, where do you find these, uh, these, uh, this caravan? Hmm... Now they were last seen on the road to the north. Towards Ram? Mm, it was near the crossroads. They were driven off. I know not where they went, but we had to fall back, for our losses were many. And what was the reason for the attack? Mm, trade dispute. Could you tell us what the caravan leader looked like in case, in case we come across him? Hmm... Unfortunately, I do not have that information, but if you found the caravan, I'm sure you'd be able to identify the leader of it. And what's the reward for Alive? There is no reward for Alive. It's ten gold to eliminate him. Which you could uh, turn in at any McKay location here or in Rom or in the McKay house in any city that you come across. There should be one in uh, almost every city. Is is uh Shazliam uh, a different uh um merchant uh, owned uh, town or stop? Ah yes. Uh Shazlim is run by Inika, the great house Inika from Tyr. You should know it well. Being from tier yourself. Mm, yes. uh, as as Kelder is between stuffing his face with wriggling grubs, he goes, Oh, friends of yours, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Well, we only uh, recently gained our freedom from the slave pits only a couple of months ago, so uh, I didn't exactly mingle too much with the uh, merchants and didn't know they had an outpost this far. Mm. Shazlam's not so much an outpost. It's not like our fort here, surrounded by its tall walls of uh, baked brick. Uh, Shazlam's a village, a rather large village with a population approaching 500. Have you heard of the tales of Tyr? What happened to the village, to the city? No, that's why I invited you to my uh, lavish dinner here. I was hoping you would regale me with tales of the war. I'm sure they're quite exciting. It all started with uh, the sorcerer king who tried to incant some defiling magic, killing everyone in the city. He bursts out in laughter and then apologizes. Mm -hmm. But we uh, defeated him and gained our freedom. Mm. And Uric believed that it was a good time to maybe try to take over, but we embarked on a caravan, an army uh, of many, and... We chased their army and defeated them in front of the walls of fear. Inconceivable. A great city without a sorcerer king. Mm. And it must be a place of lawlessness now where people can do as they please. No, oh, things are thriving. Mm, quite the opposite. We have a new king that we more or less elected uh, who is now working with the combined nobles to uh, restore some sort of order and even uh, open up the trade route with the iron mines again. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yes, uh, I had heard that piece of information that the trade in iron had resumed. It was quite a point of contention among the merchant houses. Many had spoke of uh, going to Tyr and laying claim to them themselves, but it seems as if your city has it well in hand. Yeah, we cleared the mine. And uh, liberated it from those creatures that were coming out of the walls. Hmm. Hmm. Earthen priests. Uh, what? What were they again? I can't remember what kind of creatures they were. He's curious how Kalik was defeated. To defeat a sorcerer king is no mean feat. No small task. No easy thing to do. Um, Actually, if mag I'm uh, there, in that too. How did you kill Kalik? Uh, there was a magical artifact that was used, a spear, that pressed a hole through his body. Of destiny. The legendary Heartwood Spear of the uh, the Forest Ridge yeah. Howlings. They gave the wrong spear, sorry. Yeah, all that while we were trying to save our life from... Uh, the defiling magic and uh, the Templar guards. Oh, a legendary artifact. Truly an interesting tale. And yet you didn't come from the west, you came from the south. What tales do you bring from Nibbane? Hmm. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we were on a travel, path, on a travel to bring... Uh, some treasures from one of the merchant house to Golg. Oh, are you merchants yourselves, then? Uh, no, we're just paid to uh, protect the uh, precious... Uh, uh, bodyguards, if you will. That's good, that's good. <laughs> if you were to become merchants, you should join House McKay. We could probably use such as yourselves. You seem quite capable. Well, how much does that pay? Yeah, it depends on your services. House McKay pays quite well for uh, agents of your talent. Are you looking for mm, mercenaries or uh, the sort to regularly carry shipments around? Yes, that's usually what's uh, what the uh, the agents are for. Uh, when we send out a caravan, the the agents travel with it, and they're the the key players in defeating other caravans and any kind of trade dispute. Uh, now, uh, just a ninja little question: the other fa the other um, uh, merchant group, the the one that he's talking about, that are looking for the um, what was the name again? Okay, uh, he 
hates House Lamnos. House Ham- House Lamnos, L-A-M-N-O-S, is one of the lesser merchant houses. And they don't even go under their own banner. They go under the banner of uh, several other merchant houses. Currently, they've been flying the banner of House Sham of Nibane, which is really pissing off House Sham because these people are pretending to be them and going around stealing their business and taking their trade routes. So they are wanted both by House McKay and House Sham at this point. Okay. I'm just wondering how that could affect us when we get back to Tier. Not to piss off some people. Mm. Well, if you... Well, I don't think House Lemonos is actually represented in Tier at all. It's a lesser house. Only the major houses have much representation in Tier. Well, we'll think about uh, your your offer. Also, can, uh, this is quite typical of McKay wanting to squash the little upstarts like a lesser house, House mm-hmm. Lemnos. Maybe when we get back to Tier, we'll be able to we'll talk to uh, to the merchants out there and see if they're looking for some work. Indeed, indeed. Mm. All right. Well, he pats his belly. He's quite full after the meal, and uh, it's getting late. So uh, he uh, he wishes you all uh, farewell, and again he offers you the guest house of uh, Fort Isis, so you can rest up and uh, be fresh to go in the morning and continue your travels. Thank you for your shared stories and your uh, your hospitality. Ah, uh, indeed, indeed. The pleasure is all mine, he says. I check my pockets. Is there anything missing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's going to go to bed. All of his uh, cooks and everything, they're going to leave. The porters, they're resting up in the, in the longhouse and the commons, common rooms for all of the uh, the laborers and the slaves and things. And there's only a scattered group of guards manning the, uh, the walls and the gates. And uh, night has fallen, so I assume you guys all rest, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. All right. Sleepy time. Well, I'll make a prayer. And uh, I'll go back to uh, the room. Gotcha. A new day dawns. So this will be day three. Okay, the beginning of day three. Uh, Dawn of the third day. Early on, Dillamac is already out screaming at his people. That's probably what wakes you up is the sound of his very loud booming voice shouting at people to carry things faster or to uh, to do things better. Keldor, uh, on the brink of, of waking up, just goes, five more minutes. <laughs> do All there right. happen to be any merchants that sell more kink rations around here? Yeah, definitely. You can find cank rations. Uh... Usual price? Yeah, yeah. So you guys are going to set off down the road, off into the rocky badlands. And you travel for many hours. You have to consume another 10 gallons of water. You're getting fairly tired as you approach the crossroads. So it's been most of a day's travel. You'll have to decide here. Uh, you have several options. You're at the crossroads, and you can see that there's a sign. The sign says, West to Shazlim, Northeast to Ram. And you've traveled for most of your 20 miles for the day. Uh, you could make it to Shazlim tonight, if you do a little bit of forced march for an hour or two, and then you would have the safety of the town. You'd arrive late, but you'd have the safety of a town to camp in. Your other option, you could camp here, or you could finish the last like hour of your journey uh, going in a different direction. It's up to you. I would like to go to Shazlin, even if we're not going all the way to the west route and then going north to Uruk but then start our next day from Shazlin to Ram if we were going to do that. Where are we going to Ram? 
You've heard nothing but bad things about Rom. It's in total disarray. They're having a revolution right now. They're practically at civil war. Isn't it better just to, I mean, to like solve the civil war? Yeah. Rom be kind of forced I mean, to go through Ram to get to Oric. Nope. No, there's no, like no, we go could go to two the, ways to the go. South road and then go north well, road. We can go to south. Crossroads over there. Oh, I didn't see that line. Yeah, or yeah. we can maybe even try to go across. You could cut across yeah, from here to here, but you will probably encounter giants. Still some giants. So that's I mean, where yeah. you would encounter giants if you were going to encounter giants. Probably right there. I mean, do we think we can handle giants? We already have. Pretty sure. I think well, it depends yeah. how many, if there's way more. I don't know. It depends. It's a numbers thing. <laughs> you could stick to the trade route. Sticking to the main road would add two days to your trip. I'm good with killing giants. I'd like that. Yeah. All right. Fine. We could kill giants and just make a cut across. So are you going to force march to Shamlin? Or Shaz yeah. Shazlin? Yeah. All right. So you push yourself, and you push your animals, and they're fairly tired. Everybody gets one level of exhaustion for forced march, but you arrive in Shazlim at about uh, 10 p.m. It's been dark for a couple hours, but you pressed on through the darkness until you saw the lights of the town. Uh, within five miles, uh, Vrenza will detect hundreds and hundreds of humanoids. I think we're getting close, guys. Okay. Civilization. <laughs> so this second map that I put out here, this is Shazlim right here. So you're going to come in on the road over here into town like that. So you guys can grab all your figurines and put them on this board over here. Actually, hang on, hang on. I'm going to... Oh, Scott. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take this board and blow it up bigger. I wanted this to pretty much fill the table, but since I couldn't set that up, I'll just log it, and you guys can put your stuff on there. I don't know if I'm missing a character in there. Uh, see, is it there? Is, uh, is Will going to be in this town? You there, Will? I, I need to talk to Ninja probably on on the side, oh. and and figure out how we're gonna do all that. But uh, I I appreciate the interest in, in getting me in in here. Yeah, but I want to make sure we do it right. Did you send a DM or something? Oh. Or do you uh, mean you wanted to like discuss it in a separate channel or something? Yeah, at some point when you you know not probably when you're in the middle of this, but. Uh, Okay, uh, maybe you guys can help me sort these. So almost everything is going to go in this corner over here, but I need the elves spaced out around the map because they are scouts, and they are scouting on the periphery of town. The... Are, the kanks, are the kanks the, the scouts? No, 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 no. The kanks are all going to go up in that northern part of town. Uh, the the three Thrycreen here are going to be at the elven market. So I'm going to take these guys and put them in front of the Elven Market, which is here. Um, all of the half-giants are going to go in the ruins near the center. The dwarf guards are surrounding the Elven Market. And the villagers are spread out around town in the various buildings. Uh, let's see. Why I'll... is there already a dead villager? <laughs> All four of the Inixes are up here. There's a campsite. The campsite's set up right here. So all of these kanks are parked around here. The ones that don't have riders are attached to carts, which are parked in front of this tower here. The elf scouts are over here, right? Uh, 
This dwarf goes over here, guarding the elven market. There's card three. Here's card four. I'll find that last tank. <laughs> the one without a rider. <laughs> This is all the stuff that I was trying to set up before the game, before all of the hmm. one world shit game. didn't work out. No, I think somebody cloned it. We don't need it anymore. Just delete it. Okay. Uh, all right. That's about right. Cool. Let's put this elf a little further out on the outskirts. Maybe one down here. All right, as you approach town, you're spotted by these elven scouts, and the first elven scout that sees you is going to go running off at the very fast pace that an elf can set. And he runs all the way down the street. And this other elf keeps an eye on you, and so does this one, and so does this one. They don't do anything, but they're just looking. Uh, there was one special elf. Where's that one special elf with the armor on? Not sure. Where's he at? It was one of your dark elves. Oh. I'm recall seeing it on this. Yeah, hang on. The half giants go in these ruins over here. Where's all my half giants? Here's a half giant. Uh, which one? Like the one with the sword, or...? Uh, the high priest one. Um, this one here? Yeah, he was sort of like my elven market master. Um, nah, not this one with the spear. The, the other one. There's one right next to it. Not that one either. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, Was it a Hero Forge model? Yeah. Uh, I can't find anything. Oh, is it the one with the shield? And the wand? I'll find it. It's in one of these bags. I gotta say, the ability to crowdsource the distribution of all the villagers like this is really cool and gives a great immersion and gives everybody something to do. That's just really cool about this client, this way of doing things. It's this one here. You can delete, delete all those other ones in those two bags. Well, I hey, hope you enjoy it because we're moving on a tail spire. Woo! Those are shadow priests. Yep. And everybody's moving the villagers. Tailspire is great for that because everybody can build the entire map, which is very cool. Mm. So, like, you could actually collaboratively decide, like, I'm going to build a house here with my friends, and then everybody, like, actually builds a house. <laughs> well, it, I mean, okay, I kind of fell off of DMing after I tried to do uh, Fantasy Grounds, and there's just so much to do with Fantasy Grounds. I just couldn't... I don't know, I got a sour taste, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Tailspire's really cool, because there's a website where people have made everything, and you can just go there and just grab it and paste it in. Super easy. Okay, so, uh, now that we've got the map uh, set up fully, 
You are approaching the town of Shazlim with 500 people. Uh, more than 500 currently, because there's a merchant caravan parked in here. So, here you are. You're marching up the main thoroughfare. Uh, there's a spot where you can park your your wagon over here by the, uh, the the wall here. This is a good spot for people to like park their animals. You can venture into town. It's very, very late at night. Uh, let's see. The Elven Market is not actually up and running right now. It is uh, closed. So all of these people will be sleeping inside. The sun has set. The Thrykreen are not here currently. They are in the wilderness. Not here yet. They'll be here tomorrow. So what do you guys do? Renzo falls asleep is what he does. That was me. I... <laughs> oh, that was you? That was me. So you fall over and go to sleep? Wait, <laughs> this is my turn? Yeah, what are my turns? Well, I was saying that you guys have uh, arrived in town. It's 10 p.m. You force march. Everybody's got one level of exhaustion. What yeah. do you want to do? Oh, is that why I feel so tired? Yeah. It carries over from the virtual world into the real. Are there are there more are there any humanoids? You get tired in the going? game. You get tired in real life. <laughs> I just have to find Dagger Maw. So I put somewhere and I can't. I'll bring it. I saw her. It's on the table now. Oh. Thank you. It's at zero health though. So I'm gonna. That's because you burnt her alive. <laughs> Minor detail. You know what? These days, you're going to find a big old dagger maw turd in your suit. <laughs> Extra protein, man. Ugh. That's protein. Oh, you can, re you can bring that creature back to life every time. Mm. It's perfect for a sacrifice. You ever see a snake shit and it's just the bones and the fur? How do they yes. do that? <laughs> they digested everything else. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you've just gotten to town. Sleepy little town. Everybody's in their houses slumbering. The streets are almost completely empty. Fucking hell, Dagamo's big. Let's shrink that baby down. There's only one person that you can see on the street, and he's stumbling around outside this building here. Walk in, like, uh, without, like, just quietly. Not trying to wake up people. Mm. Okay. <sighs> Was that fake or real? Any go huh? around? I think that was real. <laughs> the only person you see on the street is this man over here, stumbling around drunk. Oh, that's not good. That won't help. Is there any uh, like major main main building that we can see when we get in there? The uh, building that the drunk stumbled out of is the only one with Why the light on currently. Here? Dragon Ball's not that size. Why do you keep making him bigger? The unbeginning. First of all, it's not a him. Quit misgendering my doubt. <laughs> um, okay, oh, fine. Why do you keep a traveler. Ho oh, there, oh. traveler. Hello there. You look like the wealthy sort. Buy a man a drink, and he'll tell you a story. Oh, if you tell me where I can lodge for the night, maybe I'll buy you a drink. Ah, follow me to the inn. I'll, I'll uh, wave to the group. <laughs> Don't buy him a drink. If I had a nickel for every time I've heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Uh, the drunk stumbles in through the door. Says, My friend's gonna buy me a drink. Where's the bartender? The bartender says, Didn't we just kick you out of here? Go home, you drunk. 
What's the price of a bottle of what, what kind of drinks do we have in this world? And the bartender sees a wealthy new customer walk in and says, Ah, it's late, it's late, but uh, how may I help you, my lord? We have ale, we have wine, we have beer, cider. What's your pleasure? Pay a bottle of, of uh, cider to this uh, drunk man that helped us. Okay. You, uh, you get some cider for the drunk. He drinks it and says, Ha! It's not done yet! <laughs> it hasn't fermented enough for his liking. Do you have any shelter or uh, any rooms left for the evening? Ah, yes. Uh, we have a common room. You're welcome to it. Uh, if you wish to pay a premium, we have uh, a uh, larger... No, oh, Discon- server disconnect. Oh, yeah. T- tabletop crashed on me. Great. Wait a second. That can't happen. Okay, so when we start it back up, you're going to have to load the autosave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. You guys are making it pretty far tonight, despite the uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> I thought the previous town would take a little longer, but it didn't. We'd be further if all the assets loaded. <laughs> The previous town would have taken longer if Mad God had noticed something important. Would have taken longer. Miss? What did I miss? What did you miss? It was a detail that I told you about early into the session when you were back in Nibbane. Uh, it had to do with levels of dress. No, you didn't say. That. You did say that everyone was uh, dressed normally, and the guy that when we got to the second camp, you said that they were all dressed pretty normally as well. Well, on the first camp, the guy that spoke to us was butt naked except for g-string and sandals. Yep. Uh, he had a skirt. He had a skirt on. He was a. Yeah, yeah. He was definitely a Nibbanean, and he was wearing the most minimum amount of clothing, as if he were the highest lord in the land. And you didn't pick up on that. It could have taken a little well, longer had you picked up on that. Well, I thought that to be a noble, you were, had to be like complete and total starch naked. I thought that I'm not. I, well, I'm not sure of like the level of nakedness you have to be. I figured a skirt and sandals was pretty mediocre. Nope, that like, is that is the minimum right. without being naked. The nobles would never be naked. They'd wear at least that much. But he was dressed like the highest noble, despite his station. Right. I really thought that was I figured. I mean, I just figured he was insane and thought that he was the Shadow King. (laughs) So there was something going on there that you could have uh, you could have picked up on, but uh, well, also Creus almost found something out, but didn't. Did I? Almost. (laughs) Bad rolls prevented you from learning anything. Uh, Is that the religious ninja? So I was expecting that town to take a little bit longer. Was it the religious check that was? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. If you could, if you could tell me next time that yeah, this guy is obviously wearing something. I didn't want to make it too yeah. obvious. Like I made sure to tell you about it right up front, and then I did describe him as wearing very minimal clothing. Well, it already is meant to be obvious. I I just didn't know the terminal. I just didn't know the reference between what is and what isn't. Like character knowledge, like I assume, knowledge. Yeah, I assumed that nakedness is nobles. Like complete and total, everything's out. Yeah, if this guy's wearing a skirt, then like I figured that is on his level, on his bar. Yeah, I thought I gave you enough clues. I guess not. Hmm. What, what religion did they follow? Oh well, you didn't know. <laughs> the check said you didn't know. I'm not entirely sure where my power reaches as well, as in, I would probably only kill heretics if they were in Nibbane, outer villages, eh, there's a bit of leniency. Nibbane and territory, definitely, but, you know, it's a question of where their territory begins and ends. 
Mm. One thing that we missed and we forgot about, I think, is checking that map that we got last game. Was that like a trade route map? Um, no, it was like a, uh, on that uh, priest of air, a cleric of air. There was a mace, and we there was like a little piece inside. There was a map. Ah, um, right, right, right. Yeah. Map to the secret meeting place. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 yeah it would have taken a while for you to follow up on that. You, you guys are sort of on a mission to get to Uruk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, so we're in, and it brought us back pretty much at where we uh, we crashed. So. so he was saying you guys can uh, can sleep in the common room for uh, ceramic piece each, or uh, if you got silver, you can get the private room. Private rooms are available. Would would we just share all one private room, or? If you guys want to cram into one private room, you can. There's only one bed. And there's five of you. Yeah, sleeping in the common room. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll pay myself a room. I'll pay a silver. Okay. And that comes with a meal and everything. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, if you pay a silver, you can eat and drink and sleep in the private room on the bed. If there's another room, I will also pay a silver. Yeah, they have several rooms. Right. It's just you can probably only fit one or two people per bed. So... It's uh, individual. Is there, like a, is there a fireplace in my room? Mm. Mm, the rooms don't have fireplaces now. But they're reasonably warm. Yeah, so in Dagger Mall, I'll pick their own room. You set the silver for a room? Yeah, if you're paying a silver, that covers meals, drinks, and a private room with a bed. If you're only paying a ceramic piece, that means you're sleeping in the common room. Uh, they've got cots, and uh, the food and drink is rather low quality if you're only paying a ceramic piece. But the food is pretty good if you're paying a silver. Hey, good food. Okay, so you guys eat, you drink, you rest. The next day dawns. You can hear the bustling town outside as various people are going about their business. The inn is directly adjacent to the elven market, which means there's a fair amount of noise coming from the elven hawkers shouting the wares that he has for sale. Mm, five more minutes. Look at what they might have. Yeah. Uh, there's merchants, you said? Do you have a kind of a quick list of uh, things they might have? Okay. When you come out of the tavern, you can see that there are three Thrykreens standing in front of the elven marketplace, and they are talking to the elf merchant. A curious sight, because you know that in the wild, Thrykreen hunt elves for their delicious elf brains. Hmm. Is the elf merchant selling off elven brains to these Thrykreen? No. They seem to be doing regular transactions. The Thrykreen are trading a uh, Thrykreen tchotchka that they've crafted and various other Thrykreen weapons. The elven merchant inspects each of the weapons, nods, and hands off a few ceramic pieces to the, uh, the Thrykreen, who chitter happily at the transaction. Meanwhile, dwarven guards stand off to either corner of the uh, elven marketplace, keeping a keen eye to make sure nothing... Uh, Nothing goes on between these sometimes enemies. You can see there's various townsfolk moving about their business throughout the town, carrying water, moving crops, tending to animals. The streets bustle with activity. Over here to the west, you can see a number of half-giants are gathering large stones and trying to assemble them into some sort of structure. Among them, a half-giant uh, foreman shouts instructions to the various brutes as they carry heavy stone blocks. Two of the large brutes are lifting an especially large stone up onto two other stones to create something of a doorway while he instructs them from over here. Kelder will remark, You know, I'm beginning to think that no matter where we go, we're never very far away from the sh sound of constant shouting. I do not have permission to scale. I think I need Whoa. a promo or something. 
Uh, it's funny because I give you a uh, host. Yeah. So you need to promote you on top of that. Yep, for scaling. Not for most things, but just for scaling. So the elven market of Shazlim doesn't have an extensive supply of wares. They have a lot of common stuff. They have a fair number of materials and ingredients. They've got a decent supply of basic foodstuffs from the local farms here. But you're not going to find anything especially fancy here. Uh, but if you do need to resupply, you can certainly do that in the town of Shazlim. I has the lady if uh, she has any firewood for sale. Hmm. Yes, a uh, merchant caravan came in from Nibane. And they brought wood with them. Have they? Which uh, house uh, do you know the name of uh, the merchant house? House McKay. They delivered... Uh, they delivered wood. They delivered wooden shields, spears, and clubs. Timber, stone, spices... Nuts, glassware, and various dry beans. <laughs> Nuts. Yes. One of the major exports of Nibbane. And do, you have anything, do you have anything special for sale? Hmm. The Elven Marketplace, uh, aside from those things I listed that were just brought in, has, like I said, mostly mundane goods. Nothing especially great in this little town. Sleepy Village. The place is clearly not super wealthy. You don't see any magic users, clerics, or otherwise. Psionicists or anything like that around. Uh, Kelda will say, um, There doesn't seem to be much for us much for us here. I recommend we leave early. <clears throat> There's a lot of activity on the northwest side of town that you haven't ventured to yet. Yeah, I need to go and buy some firewood. Well, there is wood available here, like I said. You oh. can get yourself some Agafari wood that was sold. Oh, yeah, I'll buy some. Okay. How many pounds of wood do you want to buy? I don't know. What's a reasonable amount? Like, how much, how much more can we carry uh, without being encumbered or anything like that? Uh, let's see, it's uh, 1,300 pounds from just you guys, which means out of the 2,500 pound wagons, um, or wagon, leaves like 1,200, and then you've got two barrels, the barrels probably each weigh a couple hundred, so you've got about 800 pounds to spare. Oh, I'll get like uh, 60 pounds of hardwood, which will last me a little bit. Uh, so that'll cost you 60 ceramic pieces. No, I'll pay it. Okay. Yeah, you just came from there. You could have gotten some yourself if you had an axe. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had to kill those uh, those plants to get it, though. Yeah, you know, the, the funny part is that I would have probably not even thought about it at that point. <laughs> right. Aren't the trees in that forest, like, stronger than steel? Uh, agafari wood is the next best thing to metal. Yep. Most good weapons are made of agafari wood. Oh, it would have been worth to collect some to make some weapons. It's still susceptible to fire, but it's a very hard wood. Yeah, I was going to say, I probably not for you, fire cleric. I don't know, but for a friend who uh, likes the bows and arrows. Which are the it would probably be. I already cool. have an iron wood longbow. Oh yeah. Oh, something special. Yep. You never know. It comes on handy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you should go That's and take a look at the crowd before we leave. I wonder which direction they're heading. Oh. The the caravan crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, what does it seem like they're building there? Those uh, half giants. You want to go ask the foreman? 
Yeah, I'll talk in giant and ask. Okay. What are you building here? You approach the ruins and you ask the giant foreman. He walks over to you, and in his uh, deep bass voice, he will say, Hello, human. What want from foreman? I'll speak in, I'll reply in giant, and I has, I'm curious to see what you're building. We rebuild ruin fort town, make fortified structure. Was the town just attack or what? No. But town have only one stone building. Lords of town want a bigger stone building. (laughs) Today, Junior! (laughs) If nothing else must return work, you... Lift stone more. Yes. Lift stone more. Yes, yes. Yes, lift. Okay. Not much special from him. <laughs> At oh, some point, this villager comes special. out and says... Well, don't you be bothering me, workers. They're hard at work and busy. They've no time for you. If you've got questions, ask me. What are you... Uh, so you guys are building some fortification. From what? Particular from what? From whatever comes into town. Every great town needs stone buildings. I was just curious to see if uh, there was some dangers around the area. We have many houses made of adobe, but uh, we've got no fortification walls and we've got no main castle. The lord of this town has paid me and my workers to build this structure for them on the ruins of an older structure. Fortunately, they had the materials at hand. What is the rest of the group doing? People, what do you do? Um, I'm not. Hmm. Uh, do we see anything worthwhile other than good old giants building good old stone houses? Where you stand in the first little part of town, you see the giants working on their building. You see the bustling tavern where people are getting drinks and eating breakfast. Mm-hmm. You see the elven marketplace where the Thrykreen are doing business. At the far end of the street, there's a large number of uh, kank riders. It looks like a merchant caravan down there. Hmm. I'm still of the opinion that we should leave town as soon as possible. Well, the road out of town is just to the northwest past that caravan. Hmm. Well, that's my opinion. If anyone else wants to do anything, they can, but I'm... I I just want to leave. There's also the mayor's house. The mayor has the stone building at the far end of the street near the caravan. Anything fishy going on? Nah, the usual. Merchant caravans come through town. Construction continues. Nothing of note, really. You guys know that caravan. Ah, yes. That caravan, they came from Gulg. Gulg, you say? Yes. Keldo turns and says, Gold the place. Oh no, and you carry on. They must have gone all the way around down through Silver. What's that place called? I can't read the map very well. Silver Spring. We can go in the house. Yeah, I believe they said they were the uh, Merchant House Inica traveling through Gold. to be the, the caravan that we're looking for. Oh, so they're a merchant house. They're not Gogan. So, the merchant houses are represented in most major cities. So, there could be a House Inica in Gulg, but House Inica's main uh, base is in Tyr. 
No, no, I understand, but this is so. This is a caravan of House Inica. It's not a Golgan caravan. They just happen to pass through there. Yes. Okay, that makes a difference. Renza does no longer want to burn the caravan to the ground. No, no. What if that's the case? Why did you want to burn the caravan to the ground? What, what if that's the caravan that, like, we, I were, thought it we was... were bringing the necklace over there? What if that's them? We can go and take a look. See if we don't, recognize don't anybody. To the ground. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, are you guys seriously going to burn this caravan to the ground? Depends. If they're the wrong people, yeah. I mean, they, they owe it a lot. <laughs> We, we do have uh, some some deep feeling of vengeance here. I mean, yeah. I mean, my job is to follow wherever you guys go. So whatever you want to do, I'm game. Put it this way: the caravan that we were with before was from House Inica, and more or less led us right into slavery and almost certain death by the Golden. Are you all traveling in that direction? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Revenge. And I tell Kador, maybe we can get some loot from you too. You're always talking about uh, getting paid money. Mm, but and if if ever we have to do something, I don't think that we should do it in the city. We should wait that we leave. All right. We follow them. And something happens them. when you guys are walking down the main street of town. There. Scout. When you get to about the middle of the street there, a couple of elf scouts that are up on the rooftops let out a shrill whistle. And then Ambush! a bunch of men are going to come out into the street. Ninja. I mean, we're powerful. Are we really this powerful? <laughs> yes. yes. Because they're going to annihilate us with action economy. Um, I'm sorry, but that's just a box. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a really pretty white box. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna Is it still a box? Item. Yeah, acid bundle. Yeah. Okay. Mm Traveler, it says there. Where's my necklace of nine availability? <laughs> oh, here it is. What are you looking for, Ninja? This is probably going to lag like crazy. It's got to load 45 models. What? What, char what kind of character are you looking for? A deadly assassin. Hmm. If he's such a deadly assassin, why the hell did they present themselves to us instead of just killing us? No, they're killing you. Trust me. <laughs> All right, you can see this one, right? Is it is it a health or? I'll delete this one. Yes, no. Can you see this one? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, it's small though. Let's give him a bit of size. Oh, that's a woman. Waldo, <laughs> we finally find him. What did you just say? We're finally fighting Waldo. We finally, yeah, we all, we finally, if we finally found him, where's Waldo? This is Waldo. She's, a, he's a beautiful woman. Yeah, but no one, no one ever found him before, so no one who really knew if he was a man or a lady. All right, why am I not getting grid protection on this? Lame. It's because probably projecting are... the grid to the bottom map. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, there. right click Elevated. the board, toggles. Oh, it it's below the map. Grid projection. There you go. Boom. Got it. Alright, cool. These are big five foot skew. <laughs> mm. There we go. Just right. Oh, nope. I knew the scouts were evil. All right. Try to put yourself in a square. I'll put these guys in squares. Actually, I don't have to put them in squares. 
to mob. Or do you are using mob mechanics? I sure am. Yeah. It's a trap. Fucking holds. Yeah. Fireballs still work. I hope you ask that to know what you're doing. <laughs> Are the foremen, uh, then you take four squares? Yep. Don't worry about them, they're non combatants. Clear. Like, how many people are there? Uh, 12 plus the assassin. Where should I look to help? Or just down there? Okay. And you want them spread apart? Now nah, they're using horde mechanics, so they're all one cluster. They count as one creature. I hate horde mechanics. Basically because they only really serve the purpose of saying, okay, I'm going to do an AoE effect on the entire group. And it's like, okay, but it's a single creature, actually. Still works if you use a fireball, right? Uh, weird rules. Uh, it has to, like, swarm? No, weird hard, rules. Hard, it has to, like, swarm. cover an, uh, it has to, like, cover the majority of an area. It just has to affect more than, like, ten or more units. Some of that. It's been a while. I'm not laying on anymore. Well, I could cover them all with a fireball. It just stopped your 3x3 three three square from doing anything. So, Flaming Circle didn't do anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, everybody, do your initiative roll. Put initiative it into your tokens. Roll. Wait, what? Why didn't it enter the bonus? A female assassin. That couldn't possibly be Skywill. No. <laughs> That'd be a hell of an intro. <laughs> yeah. By the way, <laughs> hi. Hello. I'm here to kill you. <laughs> Going to kill all of the minions around you. Surrender. <laughs> join Hello. us or die. Okay, I join you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kill all of you. What are you going to do about it? I don't think C is here anymore. No, he hasn't been here for a while. Is his counter on? Yeah, I'll remove his counter. There you go. His computer died. Too uh, much porn. Install Windows. <laughs> okay. Sleeping. Nice. You know. Holy fuck. It, it, it's sad when your furry porn takes over your computer. You okay. See it. So almost immediately after the whistle, from every building come rushing men, armed men. They charge out with a roar, Rawr! and they charge directly at you. In among them is this uh, cloaked figure. All right, so they rush out into the street, and they're going to make ranged attacks. So I'm going to make... Oh, boy, straight to combat. All we did was walk down a path. Attacks. Let's see here. Clearly, that was a mistake. We should have flown. Uh, we should have walked off of the main road for once. <laughs> mm, who am I going to target here? Mm. All right. They're going to target Grimorn. So, Grimorn, you've got four crossbow bolts coming your way. If only we had a monk with deflect missiles. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he wouldn't get targeted either. What's your AC? 19. All right. A 16 oh, or better critical. hits. Only one arrow will hit, and it's going to do 2d8. Remember the crit. Oh, what? 
What? 2d8? So it does 12 damage. Crit. Oh my god. Bolts. Bolts from crossbows. From crossbows. Any effect? You have to give me a moment. I have to open up the browser tab Permanent and generate the lot. random event. Permanent eye loss, that would be great. I think that only happens if you get killed by it. Uh, all right. Oh, you can't bring our tank with us? That's what I mean. Okay, so it says, uh, you feel the ebb and flow of battle and know where to make your next move. After your turn, move to the top of the initiative order. <laughs> He's already there, so that's cool. Yeah, uh -huh. oh no. A roll, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... She roll. And then... So that was the mob. That was the mob, and the commander, he's going to make a sneak attack, which I think is an auto crit. And he's also tar targeting Grimorn. They really want to kill Grimorn because they know you got the fireball attack. All right, so... Um, it has to actually hit, though, first, doesn't it? Fireball? Yeah, I haven't rolled to hit yet. Deck I'm just I'm looking oh, okay. up what he has now. So, um, oh, plus that's, yeah, they have that first uh, weird combat round. Plus seven to hit. Oh, crit fail! Lucky day. It would have been an auto crit had he not missed by a mile. So you lose your combat footing, exposing yourself to enemies. Your enemies have advantage on their first attack roll against you. Unfortunately, he's oh, in the no. middle of the horde, so you won't be able to get to him. All right, so he took a shot. He missed. Uh, hmm. Unlucky. Okay, Vrenza. A horde of well, men, mercenaries led by an assassin, have suddenly attacked. Well, I just saw the assassin lose their footing. Looks like an easy target for me. Unfortunately, you won't be able to get past his men. Why not? The rules. A horde can uh, allow friendly creatures to enter its occupied space and protect them from any enemy attacks. A horde can protect up to three creatures of the same size as the horde. The creature must share space occupied. Blah, 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 blah. Protected creatures can disengage at any time to cancel this condition. The protected creatures cannot be engaged and benefit from three-quarters cover against ranged attacks unless the horde is bloodied. Oh, too bad I ignore three-quarters cover. Because I'm a sharpshooter, so I can still shoot her. Nah, I'm going to de deny that effect against swords. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm going to deny that effect against swords. Let's just call it 100% cover, and you can't ignore it. Um, totally obscured. He's got, right? he's got 200% cover. There's nothing you can do. I mean, still target the people around him. True. Imagine, yeah, imagine yeah. a uh, a phalanx formation. There's nothing that can penetrate it. All right. Well, Renza's gonna move here, and she'll do a whip attack and a hang crossbow attack. Actually, you know what? Um. Instead of the hand crossbow attack, she's going to apply a dose of her poison to her whip. Mm. All right. And then she's going to whip a guy in the face with poison. Explode people with your holy whip. That's a 20 to hit. That'll hit. Okay, uh, con save, please. Hmm. 14 plus. That passes. What? 15. DC is 14. Yeah, DC is 14. So he only takes D4 plus 8.
So 10 damage. All right. You whip one of the phalanx soldiers with 10 damage. He lets out a scream from the bloody whipping. And then she fades back behind. You fade back. Over. Morg, you're right up in the face of this thing. The horde stands before you. Defense is up. Uh, I my new my new amulet <laughs> it doesn't say it uses any form of action economy to activate it so I can just does that mean I can use it for free? I think so yeah oh wait no it says when I get hit then I can activate it alright then that's what it does it doesn't even say it uses a reaction though but okay uh I will wild shape into my giant hyena as a bonus action, and I'll use my action to bite at them. All right. Jump, 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 jump. Let's see. This I keep forgetting what the bite modifier is. If it's a five. five, five. The mercenaries have simple leather armor on. They're not that hard to hit. Oh, wait, why am I rolling two D twenty seven? Those are five foot squares, huh? Yep. Twenty. Crit. Forty six. Is it a crit or is that an unnatural twenty? No, it's a that's a natural twenty plus five, twenty five. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right, so your effect is, as you're fighting, you notice an effective route to escape danger. You're able to use the disengage action after your attack. If you want. Is it just free a uh, free action? Yep, it's a free disengage. You can move up to 30 feet, and you can't be attacked. Okay, this does 19 points of piercing damage. Gotcha. I rip and I tear at one of them. Until it is done. All right. That one probably goes down. I will tap in front over here in front of Grimorne because I noticed they're all attacking. Yeah, they did focused fire on Grimorne. They really want to take out your ability to hit with a fireball. (laughs) Uh, It's my turn. Mm. Okay. Morg, he's done. Keldor, what do you do? That would be me. Right. Well, let's see what we can do to fucking kill these guys. I am going to... Hmm. Is this... If I moved here, would this space be 15 feet away from me? Nah, it looks like 20 to me. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, I think so too. Dag nabbit. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get nice and close up to these guys. Leaving enough room for the dog to get over here. And as a bonus action, I'm going to... Well, as a free action, I'm going to look to my companions and go, Oh, Guys, by the way, there is one thing I probably should have mentioned I could do a while ago. But, uh, eh, I guess you can watch it for yourself. And as I stand in that position, a shadow form of myself leaves from my space, as if exiting my body, and appears right next to, uh, right next to me. All right. If it kind of phases out. And I move that, and I move that version of myself because it can move thirty feet over to here. All right. I then draw my great sword, uh, and the copy of myself is in line with my actions, as if being in a mirror. Uh, draws the great sword with me, and I attack. Uh, I'm not sure. Are these things counted as individual creatures? I don't know. I, I attack the horde. It's a horde. horde. It's all one creature. Uh huh. So, do I have to roll to hit? What mm-hmm. is the AC of this thing? 12. Hmm. It says here my roll to hit is this one. 
Oh, wait, one of my damage rolls is exceptional. Reroll this attack is an 18. Just roll the second attack. Okay, didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is a 25. Mm. What did you say their AC, their AC was again? 12. 12. 12. So, first so one is, is normal, second one's an exceptional. Uh, the damage is that. So I'll roll all my damage dice at once. Actually, there's a bunch of things to consider here. Mm, I'll go with that. I'll re-roll the one. Ah, hang on, hang on. No, my brain's melting here. Yeah, it says that I can re-roll if I want to re-roll for exceptional, but I don't have to. So I'll just re-roll that one. I'll keep the roll that I've got, but I'll re-roll that one with Great Weapon Fighting. Mm -hmm. Does your attack normally do plus six? Oh. And you just double it up to plus 12? <laughs> yes. All right. So... So... Ones to damage. So, as a bonus action, I summon my shadow, I move it over to here. Uh, as my first attack, my, uh, my, uh, myself, I attack the horde. And uh, for my second attack, my shadow attacks the horde. All right. You do an additional 29, 29 damage. damage, which puts it at uh, 58. Those and damage. you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to expend one of my uh, Unleash Incarnations to attack one more time. Through the Echo Space. And I'll re-roll that one. Did you roll the hit, or that's just a damage roll, right? Oh yeah, I do have to roll the hit, don't I? <laughs> Whoops. I mean, their AC is twelve. You could crit fail. I'd like that. Nope. <laughs> okay, I hit. I'll use my... You did twelve damage. You're gonna re-roll one. Yeah, I'm gonna re-roll the one. I got a max. Yeah. So, three, four, five, 15. nine. Yeah. So, 15 damage with another hit from my Echo Space. All right. Chop, chop, chop. Keldor goes nuts on the horde of mercenaries who are quite surprised by his psionic abilities. <laughs> okay. Dagger Maw. Duplication. Charges in. Oh, not far enough to actually be charged. Were you able to back up and then charge in? Do you have enough movement? Uh, not without going through people and then. Gotcha. Okay. And then I'd lose movement. Yeah. I don't think it would work. Much as I would like to cheese it yet again. I think I'm only gonna be able to do this one round of combat tonight, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna call it quits right after this. I'm gonna let Krius have his turn and we'll start back 22. at the top. That's a hit. Exceptional even. Oh, oh, it's a D eight plus twelve damage. Eighteen bite damage. She just tears a guy up. Okay. Does she have a new chew toy? Yep. Yay. These guys have ragdolling whatever limb she happens to have in her mouth right now. These guys have like eleven hit points apiece. So like if you do more than eleven damage you kill one of them. If you do more than 22 damage, you kill two of them in one hit. Nice. How much did I kill? Mm, a bunch. <laughs> you went bonkers, yeah. dude. Like five of them, probably. Cool question. 15 plus 29. Like, 
How does uh, AOE work with something like this? That's mad Perfect. god, it doesn't. <laughs> It right, doesn't. So if I put a it, wall of flame in them, what happens? I will treat it as one creature, and they'll take damage once. So but fireball doesn't like work? It, no AoE effect will work against a horde until they break. Okay. So he changed Basically. it. Yeah, but it's not an AoE. It's like a static uh, zone of area of damage. Yeah. What it, it works exactly as it would work against one creature. The horde counts as one creature. They're, yeah. they're going to stay there. It is basically just one creature that can surround another creature. Yeah. They form a protective barrier against around the, the leader, and the leader gets a legendary action for being in the center there. Yeah, but the, legend, the leader shouldn't be able to do anything else other than command. They yeah, shouldn't be able to attack. Manage. Legendary actions are extra. I just haven't used it yet. I'm going to use it right after Kriya's. That's if I banish it. So what? You can banish the leader. What do you yeah. do? You gonna throw fire down in the middle of them? What you gonna do when they come for you? Uh, I could banish <laughs> the leader. Banish Sky will do it. <laughs> what do you mean banish? Is that a spell? Uh, banishment. It sends them to his fire plane, where they will be into consumed. Another, uh, plane and then they, lost and... You'll hit the same problem uh, Vrenz ahead, where he's inside of a phalanx formation and cannot be targeted. Okay, so, so we must break I'll their phalanx be... formation first. Yeah. As utilitary as possible. And I'll put a wall of flame in front of them. Facing towards yeah, them so that they get burned, right? Yeah, and they can't move forward, or else they're just going to keep on taking damage for each one that moves in. All right. Wait, where are you putting this wall of flame? Right there. All right. Cool. But it's 10 foot thick. Kildur's safe on this side of the line. The fire does damage on the other side. Yeah. So, I can't see them anymore. Yeah, a wall of fire springs up right in front of you, but is not going to burn you on this side. Uh, so I'll roll damage, I guess. I got a deck save, right? Can they? Like, they're all stacked in one pile. Yep. They can't really move. They count as a creature. All right. And I'll trigger my ability mm. for additional damage. I got a 16. Does that save? Um, the save is 16. Then yes. So yes. Okay. So save for half, right? Unless they are all rogues. <laughs> or monks. Yep. 5d8 damage or half as much on a successful save. So they still take damage from it. Yeah, but they're going to take an additional, uh, what is it? Uh, modifier. I got to re-roll the one. Okay. Um, an additional seven. So 30, and then the, it's going to be 30, and then they're going to take my modifier plus five. So 35 turns into... 19. Yeah, that's the first round, but they're going to keep on taking damage. Because they can't escape it as a mouth. They can move. Yeah, but there is still going to be some inside of it, except if they escape it completely. Yeah, they can move 30 feet. And I'm going to move and hide behind the corner of the wall here. Take cover. Gotcha. Okay, so the commander's going to use his legendary action. He commands uh, his soldiers to make one more attack. This time it'll be against Keldor. I'll just roll the dice here on my table. Uh, it's a 17 to hit. Does that hit Keldor? Uh, yes, I'm a class 17. Okay. Um, so, let's see. They hit you with... Um, a sword. Does a d6 plus 1... Oh, wait, not plus one. It's uh, 
plus three. So it does five damage to Keldor from that swing. And then that'll be the end of the first round of combat. When we pick up, it'll go right back to the top, starting with the enemies and then going through all of you guys. So I'm going to end the stream there. Thanks for watching out there in Twitch land. Hmm? Thank you, Twitch. Sorry, how much damage I said? Good night. I don't know. Good night, Sagafrog. Bye. <laughs> oh, he's really yeah. already gone. Good night, Twitch. Night, Twitch. He was very tired. <laughs> so at some points, I thought the snoring was actually him. I don't know if it was. Or if yeah. it, was uh, it was always me. We had a, we had a viewer, Gruel Notarog. He's a friend of mine. TPK in three minutes. I forgot how slow they are, so three minutes turn time. <laughs> he was expecting uh, the whole party to die to this attack. I probably could have killed one of you if I hit with my uh, auto crit assassin shot. It would have done a ton of damage, but he didn't land that shot, unfortunately. How Lord much damage of fire did... smiles upon Grimoire today. So, do you guys know what's going on here? Not really, no. An assassin's been hired by the Oba of Golg to take you out. He was traveling uh, with the merchant the caravan. Well, the assassin's from Golg. These guys are just hired mercenaries. They don't come from Golg. Ah, okay. But he was Any traveling... He was traveling with the merchant caravan from Golg to here, and he hired these mercenaries last night. When he found out you guys came into town, he hired these mercenaries to set up this ambush to kill you in the morning. Mm. I see. So if we just stayed till like the afternoon, then uh, they would be like, "Man, where's our? Where are they?" <laughs> so, so this whole this whole encounter is happening specifically because Golg hates your guts. <laughs> Hey, how much damage did I take again? Uh, damage. Well, yeah, I, they breached my AC. You just got hit. It was five damage. Five. Oh, I'm dead. I rolled two, and it did plus three. Those are some angry peasants. These are low-level mercenaries. They're all, like, second level. Pretty weak, but in a horde, they can do some good stuff. Said what I said. They're peasants. <laughs> yeah. uh, you you almost carved through the entire horde in the first turn, so they're not going to last two turns. It's pretty sad. <laughs> I should have brought more men. Kel Keldor did that. <laughs> Fortunately, my assassin's pretty good at getaways, so we'll see if they can uh, they can hoof it after their phalanx formation fails. Rensa, hold person. <laughs> I <I'm> not <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Hey, my apologies. Mm -hmm. I had to step out for uh, taking care of kids for a second there. Yeah, no worries. We usually end around midnight, so that's pretty much the end of it. I haven't actually closed the stream down, but I'm about to, so signing off.